Well, certainly we don't in our culture like to talk about death and dying and end of life. It's something, it's the, what is it, the 800 pound elephant in the room that everybody knows is there but nobody's willing to talk about. Parents usually say if they're my clients, the kids don't want to hear about this. And if the adult children are coming in to see me about their parents, they usually say mom or dad don't want to talk about this. Uh, but I think once discussions get started, it, it goes much easier. I, I usually threaten clients that if you don't do this and pick somebody you trust, the judge is going to appoint the one child that you didn't want to become your decision maker. That's going to be your guardian, and they're going to make all your decisions. Often that's enough to get a client to say, yeah, let's do this. But you have to think about, well, can, can which of my four children is going to be able to listen to what the doctors are recommending and then decide what of those recommendations I would have wanted and what of those recommendations I would absolutely never want and be able to stand up and tell the doctor that's what we're going to do. Because doctors tend to want to do certain things and, and your, your decision maker needs to be able to number one, make decisions and number two, listen and evaluate recommendations and then be your advocate and question why the doctor wants to do choice A versus choice B. The question about when should you do this, you should do it now. Uh, and if you should do it at any age. I'll be speaking to a high school class, senior graduating class at the end of the month about this because it's people who are younger and healthier who if they get into an accident, their bodies are likely to keep on ticking. Uh, if, you, if you look at all the, the real significant national legal end of life cases, they're all younger, healthier people who've had a, usually a terrible illness or, or accident and, and they can be kept on life support for a very long time. Um, so really people who are younger and healthier really need this to be, to be accomplished, create the document, have some conversations. Um, their feelings about end of life choices will change as their life progresses. So these are not documents where you put all the answers into the document the first time. You need to do the document so there's a legal decision maker and then continue to have conversations with your decision makers over your lifetime. Well, the State Bar Planning Guide, The Gift to Your Family, is a terrific resource. It, it has a series of questions and topics in, in the guide that people can use to get the decisions or the discussions started. And I think the key points to having this be successful is one, it's really good to do a document and have it be valid and legally signed and created, but that by itself isn't going to accomplish what we need. People need to talk about these things. They need to talk about their values, their religious perspective. Uh, maybe a good way to do that is to talk about other family or friends who've passed away or had medical decision making that had to be done and whether that went successfully or not. But it's one thing to be named a decision maker, it's an entirely different thing to know enough about that person to be able to make a good decision and feel comfortable with it. Once you do a document, a health care power of attorney or a living will, you want to get that on file with your health care system. Uh, and they're becoming much better at scanning those in so they can actually be found and relied upon or referred to when decisions have to be made. You also want to give a copy of that to all your decision makers and your children. Uh, so if you have five kids and you're only appointing two, you want to be sure the other three also know what's going on. Um, and you also, it's not a once and done thing. The fact, I looked at one yesterday that was done in 1997. And the people they would have picked now are much different than the people they picked in 1997. Um, and you have to update these periodically like you do with any estate planning document. And many communities have trained facilitators to, and, and processes in place. Uh, a, good, a good source for that would be to, to just do a, a little search on the internet about end-of-life planning uh, or to call your local clinic because very often clinics have people trained to help you complete these documents. And there are numerous document types, most of which are valid in Wisconsin, so it's not one form fits everybody. Uh, some religious communities have versions of these documents that are perfectly valid uh, and may better reflect someone's religious preferences or, or, uh, or needs. So it's really important to ask around at church, at social clubs, or your local uh, family lawyer is a good place to get started uh, for either help or a referral to a source in the community where you can complete the planning. A good lawyer you know, may, may tell you, well, you know, for this area you really would be better off with with this other community resource or with this other type of attorney. Elder law attorneys, estate planning attorneys are the kind of folks who usually deal with this with our clients, but um, we're not the sole source for this. 
but if people were looking for a good guide that will really walk them through the process, um, the Gift to Your Family Guide on the State Bar website is really a, a perfect place to start get out and get this done. I mean, it's so important and, and very often if one person in the family, a parent or an adult child gets this accomplished, that'll cause other people in their family to say, oh, I better do that too. So somebody has to go first and, and get a toe in the water and once that happens, very often lots of friends and family will, will also get this accomplished. People have also told me they've had, they've had a, you know, end of life planning parties or healthcare document planning parties where they'll get together with friends, they'll walk through the guidebook and the questions and then they can act as each other's witnesses as long as they're not related to one another. So you can, you can make a fun event out of it too. It doesn't have to be so threatening. It's really just important to get it done.